about an MMA Worldwide magazine, joined here by the monster, Mr. Kevin Randleman and himself. Woo! How are you doing today? I'm good, you? Good, good, good. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've been trying to get hold of you for a long time, so I'm glad to finally get a chance to talk to you. I like to stay under the radar. Yeah, yeah. So we'll jump into some questions here. Like I said, we're doing some like early days UFC stuff and then some other random stuff. So we'll just jump into some stuff. Uh, you competed on some of the earliest UFC cards. What were your thoughts about the competition back then? What were your thoughts about your performance now? Like, what were your thoughts then? And looking back now, what are your thoughts on how you perform and how compared to the early days of the UFC was for you? Uh, early days of the UFC it was pure. It wasn't a bunch of commercial shit. It wasn't a bunch of fucking bureaucrats trying to change everything. They didn't have owners that thought that their shit didn't stay. You know, uh, you just it was it was just no weight classes. It was, it was two guys in there. Guys could be 40 pounds heavier or bigger. Now everyone's crying about a difference in five pounds. What the fuck is that shit? It makes me sick to see, I mean, I like the fact that the money's getting better, but the money should be better, because they're making 50-some million dollars a pay-per-view. Every guy that fights for on a show for the UFC should get paid big fucking money. Yeah. That's it. That is, that is a crime. The guy's prelims are getting two, three, four, five grand. That's bullshit. Yeah. I don't care if, you know, I, I understand you got to earn your way, but Brock Lesnar came from, from WWE and got a title shot. Uh, you know, it's like... They, they bend they bend a lot of the rules for their own will. You know what I mean? They don't even have a they don't this doesn't even have a governing body of them all of that governing yeah, them. Very true, very you know, true. So and I'm not hating on them, I've always given nothing but accolades to them for whatever they mean, everything that they've done for the sport and keeping them around. The bottom line is, you know, they're not the fucking sport. Every guy that fights, we're the sport. Without us, there ain't, there won't, there is no fights. So until we get together and unionize ourselves, there's not going to be a bigger payday for the, all the guys. But I mean, it's like if they even hear of someone trying to start a union or whatever, they'll be like, oh, that's it, the guy's gone. What do you but, think it's going to take to make that happen as far as unionizing? Everything? It's going to take another company. With a guy with some big ass money that can take fighters away with big money and big uh, big promises, and um, you know what? It's coming. There's a lot of guys out there, and uh, I've been approached by some big money guys. I saw your one tweet today about CBS. Can you elaborate on that at all, or no? Not yet. <laughs> well, I like to get my I like to get people's what else. Bottom line is. I've been in this sport a long time, and I've been behind the scenes to see it. I know the bullshit that goes on. Any fighter that fights should be getting revenue. If a fight, if every fighter that fights on a car, if that fight generates 56 million, they should get a, I don't care if it's 10% or 5% that they give and share all of them. And I'm gonna take a lot of flack for this, but I'm one of the fighters. My son, I have a son, and my son wanted to fight. I expect him to be treated better than what I was treated or a lot of the fighters I see. And you got guys that are ass kissers getting fucking favoritism over guys that are better fighters, hands down. But they won't kiss ass. So they're gone. They're like, look. You got guys that lose twice in the UFC. They get cut. You got guys that have lost four or five fucking times, and they're still in the UFC. How does that work? You know? fighters out there that they don't fucking train. So if you're not training, then you get the call from Joe saying, hey, you got the title shot. Oh, uh, I'm not ready. Well, dumbass, you ain't gonna ever be ready today. We're not gonna use you. So the ranking system, as good as it may seem, this isn't the WBA, WBO, and all that stuff. This is, uh, you got guys who got family. It's getting big and mainstream, but the guys don't take it that way. When I fought, I fought any fucking body anywhere, and I still say it today. And, and I don't fight in the cage anymore, so watch what the fuck you say. If you 
talk shit about me. I'm a swing the street. And I'm sorry. I'm the same asshole that I was back in the day and today. I'm just smarter, better, and I've got family. Family right now. But the disrespect, you know, you got politicians, you got you got people judging events that's never been smacked in their fucking face. Why are you judging anything if you don't even know what an arm bar is? You don't even know the sport. You haven't even you weren't even an athlete in high school, let alone going to college, and you're judging shit. That's bullshit. Just because your husband is a judge or your wife is this, you don't you're not entitled to anything. But we as fighters, we're entitled to half of the pot. Because without the fighters, the UFC would fold. Without without the fighters, Bellator would fold. Without fighters willing to bang every day, it would fold. There should be insurance for every fighter that's on the company's fucking payroll. You should have insurance just like any other company you should have. So if you're training, if you're training and you don't have another job, and you're training and you fight for the UFC and you're under contract with the UFC, you should have life insurance. I mean, health and life insurance. health insurance, life insurance. So, you throw a car insurance in there, he's mad. Nah, nah, let's not get over it. <laughs> I mean, if you're doing stuff for the UFC and you travel around for the UFC, you dang right, you should get a per diem or something. Uh, I just, I think that there's some companies out there, and that actually, I just, some friends of mine, and I myself, we just started a company, Global Fighting. We're, we're starting, we're doing everything that we see wrong, and we're changing it. And when we open our doors and start fights, everyone that fights for the company is going to get a 10% revenue share in whatever's made that year. We don't plan on having two, 300 people on our payroll. We plan on having, if we've got 40 fighters, that fight in that physical year, they're going to get 10%. They're going to get to split up 10% amongst the board. And if it's 100,000 or 200,000 uh, that each of them gets, it's a lot more than any other company is giving them. Insurance. Uh, insurance, as long as you're under contract with the team. And if you get hurt, and if you break your leg riding a bike, you're not covered. If you get hurt training, okay. And understand, we're not stupid. We know exactly how you get injured. If you got road rash and you say you hurt your knee, well, I'm sorry, road rash isn't done on a mat. Um, I think that there's a lot of things that can be changed. And uh, the guys that approached me to help them build a new company, I told them what I what, what needed to be done. I told them what they have to do, and they're willing to do it. They know that they might lose a little money here and there, but they're willing to do it just to become a company that will be around for a long time. And uh, the, money, the guys that I'm, the guys that I'm kind of working with, uh, they've got a lot of money. Uh, they got they got that stupid money that they don't give a shit, <laughs> and uh, they ain't gonna be bullied by nobody. So they're like, whatever. I told them you can't go out and hire your brothers and sisters to come in and think that they're going to know what they're doing. You're going to ruin the company. You've got to get people that work for Zupa. You've got to get people that work for Strike Force. You've got to get people that work for other companies to come in and help us build this company and make it better. Because they know the intricacies of companies. I'm a little sick sometimes when I think about it. Phony motherfuckers. I hate, I get tired. I just get tired of the phony shit. That's why I keep to myself. I don't say much to nobody. And if I say something, if you talk about me, I don't give a fuck who you are. You could be Jesus. You could be the devil. You could be Brock Lesnar. You could be a uh, great man. It doesn't matter. I'm a respectable guy. I'm a respect everybody. As soon as I hear that you disrespect me, I'm going to see you. And when I see you, I don't need a fucking ring. And I don't need to be paid. I'd rather be paid. But I see you. Don't 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 be that guy that kisses my ass because you don't want me to fucking go. I'm a banger. I was a banger before I was an MMA fighter. I was a banger, not a gang banger, but a banger. I was a street fighter before I even knew what MMA was. Before MMA was even anything. So I've always been the same guy I was. I'm always gonna be that guy. I just believe that the fighters should get a little bit more respect. You know, with the concussions and the arm breaks. I mean, people don't realize that there's 
death is right around the corner when you're in the cage. We have Sauce Knight here already, actually. Close. Yeah, yeah. He's down for a while. So, you uh, know what? That's the bridge. Yeah. Listen, when I fight, I know. The possibility is there that I'm going to wake up in the hospital. I, I hear people complain. I'm sick of hearing people complain about things that we can't change. And the only way we're going to change is if, if we all get together and kind of make a union, unite, and stand together. But no one's going to do it because you've got 55 different camps in America. And if one guy tries to make a stink, then the UFC or whatever company they're working for is going to push him to the side and let someone else come out the front. So everyone's scared to make a presence. But the government, the government can always step in and do their due diligence. You step in and make an association and all that stuff for the NFL. You've got baseball and they've got a governing body. You've got uh, soccer and hockey. Governing body. We need a governing body for MMA. And the people that stand up there, there needs to be more rules, more laws, and more, uh, more profit sharing for the fighters. Period. Period. So uh, you competed, like I said, some of the earliest events. I'm actually going back and re-watching them. What would you want me or any fan or any person to take away from the early days of the UFC? If you could pick one thing, like one takeaway, what's the thing? Nothing's ever going to be raw. No, nothing's ever going to be pure again. Nothing's ever going to be pure again like that. Granted, now you know the, the changes in rules to help set is for the safety. But back in the day, it was it was as raw as it gets. So what is your? We'll do one end of the question and, and the other. What is your fondest memory of your time spent in the UFC? On the other hand of that, what is your least favorite or worst memory of your time spent in the UFC? My least favorite memory of the UFC is the ass kissers in the UFC. That, that kiss ass. Kissed ass. I'm not an ass kisser. I got fired and let go of the UFC because I wasn't an ass kisser. And, uh, my favorite memories of the UFC, my friends, yeah. the Randy Couture, the Chuck Bells, you know, guys like that. My least favorite is just how political it was, like how political it came, real, became real quick. You know, it's like they, it's, it's like, and, and UFC's not the only company. There's a lot of companies out there that think that they deserve to fucking be Jesus. And I'm sorry. You bought a company, and without guys like me, the company would have fucking folded. And as soon as you can't use a guy anymore, you get rid of him, and then whatever, or you'll find a reason to get rid of a guy, or you know, there's uh, there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scene, and only we only hear the bullshit that they spew to us. And they, you know, it's like you got so much power, people are scared to step on your toes. I step on toes. You step on feet, whole feet. I don't work for no fucking money. I work for myself, so I can say what I want. And until a government gets involved and makes a governing body that will govern this sport, it's going to keep becoming, it's going to stay bullshit. You know, all the fans, and, and you fans out there, you guys need to learn what the fuck this sport's about. I'm sick of hearing a boo. If I hear one, when I'm, I don't even go to fights anymore because I'm standing there watching two guys go at it. And then I hear some bullshit ass fat fuck standing next to me telling me, boo up. The fight's 20 seconds into it and they're booing. Drunk ass, dumb ass, and uneducated ass booing. And I'm educated and I've been with this, you know, and it just, it's frustrating. You know, I keep shit as real as it can be. And I don't like a lot of the fake phony shit that goes on. Um, All right, with the so you kind of touched on a minute ago, the behind the scenes side. What's one behind head. the scenes story you might be able to share with us to kind of give us a little insight? No. Nothing? You're not going to do that? No. Right. Fair enough. So I'm That's not my place to. My, my place is not to snitch on shit that happens. My place is just to tell you what I know first name, first name. Okay. Other people's business is other people's business. UFC and, and all the, but you know, what I'm talking about is common knowledge. It's what you can see on every blog. You can see this on every, you can see this when you, when you talk to other fighters. So I'm only telling you what we all talk about. And, and you know, we talk about. So you engage